we will now convene since uh, hopefully Commissioner Dietrich will show up here in a little bit. I think he wants to be at this meeting, I presume. So you are now in charge of the presentation. Good afternoon. This is Pete Palmer, the Director of Planning. Um, I want to take a quick minute and introduce our new staff. Um, we have Camden Irwin. He's our new GIS technician working with Gene and Ted here. This is Lainey and Commissioner Brand, Commissioner Holder, and then usually we've got Commissioner Dietrich sitting there. So um, I'm excited for you guys to kind of get an idea of how business is ran at this level and kind of feel comfortable with everybody. Um, these would be the people that we're talking to. We never send you over here to get anything. And then we got Morgan Allen. She is our new administrative secretary. She's just like hitting the ground running. Actually, both of them have. They're just right on top of things and picking up everything real quick. So we're hoping um, that we're going to get Morgan worked in to kind of get in a better handle on these public hearings and getting the notices out in time for us. Um, she hasn't had any experience here yet with that. We've been trying to get her up on all this other stuff that's been backlogged, so hopefully that will get straight too. Okay. We're cheering for you, Morgan. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. Nice to meet you, Camden. I'll stop in and say hello back in your place of work sometime when I get back there. All right. Thank you. So um, we were invited to have a discussion on Veranda Beach first on my agenda today. Um, I brought Angie along with me so she could kind of add some more technical information as to what's going on, but I wanted to um trying to give you a rundown of where we're at today and how we got there um from my last update angela had created an indemnification form it, it um, is going through david getches right now um looking at that he provided us one but it was more tailored to other uses um, so that also was provided to mr hammond uh, she contacted Leonard at the Department of Ecology to come out and identify the Urban High Watermark. Evidently in the past, um, there was a survey line that was being used, which was the wrong line to be using as the Urban High Watermark, which was uh, kind of put the county at a little bit of risk. So um, it's been policy within the department since before my time is that any development in the shoreline around um, the lake up there that uh, Department of Ecology comes out and identifies that model. So we're trying to get that scheduled in. Um, the county codes require that a shoreline substantial development permit be obtained for this development, which is again the model home. Um, the engineering specs that were submitted, the venting on the specifications didn't meet the FEMA requirements. So we're having that uh, re-looked at and it's my understanding that Mr. Hammond will be working directly with um, Dan at the building department to get that all done correctly. Um, Is that venting the uh, foundation basically for water? So along those lines, we did not require a floodplain development permit um, just to get that shoreline substantial development permit done. Um, due to the uh, PDA, um, but we did agree, everyone agreed that the structure would have to be built to FEMA specifications. There was just no way around that. Um, so this, uh, it, the, um, the, Living space floor is then actually below the um, flood elevation. Is that what we're talking about? Uh, um, yeah, the, there's a crawl space that's below floodplain oh. elevation, and the proposal is to put venting in. And there's just um, the elevation of the venting is too high. It's actually above base flood elevation, and I'm not sure if they use two different datums because the bottom datum says 915 for, and then the next highest floor they're saying is 922. 
but then the space in between the bottom floor and the and the bottom of the crawl space they say is 27 inches so i think it's a datum okay. um i think it was just an oversight or whatever it just needs to be corrected be a seven and then foot, the vent, seven foot crawl space. The, yeah and then, and then the vent put at the right level is it is it 919 there Nine nine eighteen, yep, nine eighteen is the base flood elevation. And then that has to be built to nine nineteen. So it's built to nine nineteen. Yes. And the vent has to be below nine eighteen or else mm -hmm. it won't make sense because the water can't flow up So it'd be a good wind. So to this point, um we do not have a uh final plat approved yet. Um so in order for a residence to be constructed there, um, the subdivision code requires that it be a model home and that an indemnification statement be signed to release the risk of the county um, having provided permitting and inspections. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with that. Um, we did ask for um, the signing authority for Veranda Beach because the state no longer has Veranda Beach registered as as a entity. Um, so we're looking for that. As far as completing the long plat, um, what we're waiting for on that is to get um, Josh up there to inspect the uh, rock slope and, and do the engineering inspection on that to make sure that it was that adequacy uh, adequate. Um, we need the final plat uh, map submitted along with the final review fee of $330 and that's going to kick off. It's been about a two week process depending on the workload of the other departments for their final review or on a final plat. So that's about how long it's going to take for that. And then of course, part of that process is reviewing the ordinary high water mark and having that you know, indemnification statement signed. And then once all that complete and finalized, it will come to the commissioners for final submission. So that's kind of where we're at with everything. Um, we did receive an email from Mr. Hammond that basically says that he's not going to submit the substantial shoreline development permit or a substantial development permit. Uh, or the indemnification agreement because he feels that that wouldn't be uh, required. And then he feels that the county has the authority to um, determine that ordinary high water mark. But because of the policy within the office and past issues with that high water mark, again, we are really relying on the Department of Ecology to come down and do that. So uh, nobody's, um, nobody in the department's made uh, High water mark determinations at all? No, I've had the Department of Ecology with me to verify every single one, unless it's so far away that it's not necessary. Okay. So, just so you're aware, what happened in the past, and, and Ange, please jump in, is when they were using that survey line to do identify the ordinary high water mark in the past it caused some issues and then ecology came in with a whole bunch of enforcement actions against these um, homeowners because they were the, using the survey line. Right, right. So um, that was the reason why the policy was put in place to have them come down and verify each time. Past enforcement action. Okay. So <clears throat> The purpose of this meeting is to inform us that you're doing the right thing, or is that uh, what? I received an invitation to a Veranda Beach discussion at 1.30, so. That was sent on the request that uh, Mr. Oh. Hammond uh, wanted to speak to the board. Okay. I suggested that it happen while you were here during your uh, 1.30 time, and he said that would work. So. How that came about. It came about last week. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Evans, would you like to come up and give uh, your view of the world? Thank you. Um, director, I've got one of these for you. Uh, 
comes please to the commissioner. Thank you. Well, first of all, um, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to uh, make a, a presentation to you. Uh, it's going to be as brief as uh, possible. Uh, I've copied uh, uh, Director Palmer with uh, the information you have in front of you, and I'd just like to uh, quickly explain uh, the reason we're here. Uh, I really didn't have any plans to speak to the uh, model home issue that Director Palmer has brought up um, today, uh, but uh, I'm here to talk about the the uh, timeline for the long plat. And uh, I just will quickly review uh, that in January of 2010, um, Veranda Beach applied for modification to the development agreement that was created uh, way back in uh, at the inception of Veranda Beach. And that agreement was approved in uh, April of two thir 2013. So it, it took uh, three years to go through that process, which is a long time. Uh, the development agreement is very detailed. I believe it's over 30 pages. And it, uh, it of course, uh, sets out all the terms and conditions of development, the uses uh, of, uh, that are uh, permitted and so on and so forth. Uh, the purpose of the development agreement is, as we understand it and as was explained to us, to streamline, streamline the pro uh, plot process or, or uh, phasing process going forward. Uh, so a lot of the detail, the archeological, the geotechnical, the biological and so on and so forth, uh, studies and reports uh, were compiled and uh, reviewed by the planning department and approved. So the development agreement is in place as a precursor to these plot applications. Um, well, that, that's not news to you, but uh, I'm getting educated as we're going along here. I should share with you. Um, so in August uh, of 2019, we submitted this long plat application uh, for the point at Granada Beach. And uh, it is now um, um, February of 2021. Um, got a few typos in my presentation here, excuse me. But uh, a preliminary approval was issued in March of 2020. So it took some months before we received our approval. Uh, we have since then been uh, uh, meeting and the conditions in the preliminary approval. Uh, I should say that uh, I, I want to be clear that I'm not here to criticize or, or uh, uh, in any way uh, uh, object to the planning department and uh, the way, the length of time and the way this uh, application has been processed. I recognize that uh, we were, we were uh, without a director of planning for some time, that uh, it's, it's not reasonable to expect uh, Director Palmer to be intimately familiar with all of these documents and so forth. Uh, so that's not the purpose of my meeting today. Uh, the purpose of my meeting with you today really is to move this forward. It's been an inordinate length of time, uh, to say the least, uh, for this plan application to be processed. So the outstanding issue uh, at this stage uh, appears to be the uh, verification of the ordinary high water mark. Uh, that was required in the preliminary approval, uh, and that, uh, as Director Palmer explained, that there was a change through uh, DOE from the uh, previous method of, of determining the high water mark to a biological method. And so um, we retained the services of Terrapin Environmental. You're probably familiar with them. 
they do a lot of work in the area and they're very well respected. And, and uh, they provided a 27 page detailed, very comprehensive report uh, of the uh, uh, determining the high water mark. And that was, uh, that was given to uh, the planning department in July of last year. Uh, since then, um, we've been trying to move forward and get this plaque approved. Um, I should point out to you, uh, there's, uh, in the information I've given you, there is a plan. It's got some uh, colors on it. This was part of the uh, Terrapin Environmental Report, and it uh, outlines uh, the the previous um, ordinary high water mark, and as well as it, it outlines in red the biological ordinary high water mark that was uh, um, identified by uh, Terrapin Environmental. So, one of the conditions of the Granada Beach Development Agreement is that uh, buildings uh, must be 50 feet uh, of, uh, landward of the high water mark. That is twice the 25 feet that is required under the Shoreline Master uh, Program. And uh, I have a question. Yes. Was that, was that was that the Master Program at the time or the current? I don't know what I can't remember what the That's current. The master is. Program at the time, and he's right. He's vested in that Master Program. At the time. At the time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cur currently, it's 50, though. That's correct. Okay. So even even under the current one, the development standards meet the current uh, master program. That's correct. There's no argument with that. We just want to verify. Oh, I want to mark. So, so just out of curiosity, because I I have a little bit of dealing with high water marks just in conversation with. Uh, um, surveyors and things like that. Who can actually establish an ordinary high water mark? And is it in code, or not code, but is it in RCW, is it in WAC? What, what's, do, do you know what that is? It's on the file, which is typically. And well, it, it is based on standards that we have in the Department of Ecology has for their standards for the high water mark. Okay, so I'm curious, Terrapin then as a, uh, as a uh, environmental agency. Yes, he's a professional biologist. They are professional biologists. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then why are we, uh, and I guess this comes back to, we probably need to look at the, the um, policies, I guess, that are in place, right? If we have a policy in place that says you have to go out and identify it with DOE every single time, I guess. Technically, a biologist can go out and identify her or not her one of my. What kind of we're doing is verifying, and that's because um, as far as the distance from the ordinary one of the county is on the hook for that requirement. So it's our job to verify that that the work that they did is will um, suffice for that one of our. And the problem that we had before was that Department of Ecology was coming back. On the old ordinary watermark and and doing a bunch of enforcement actions. Was that was the, were those uh, determinations made by the um, biologists or the county or anything like that? They were not, to okay. my knowledge. Okay. But it was mostly that we were trying to um, protect the residents and the landowner and ourselves mm -hmm. um, by asking ecology to verify the ordinary watermark because they have a training that's like a. Three or four days, I don't remember how long their training is, um, but none of us have been to that training. So, so um, I went to a short two day training, I think Mr. Brant was there back in 08. Mm -hmm. so that, was, that was a long time ago. Yeah, I arranged that one just because of this very reason, but. Um... So uh, what is our, so our code doesn't have like for wetlands delineations? Yes, it does. It uh, specifies that a uh, contractor can do the work. Yes. By a biologist. Uh, and so, 
because they got their they got their stamp on the hook essentially if they're that's, doing it. Right? That's what I was wondering. Was the yeah. Woodenton Environmental Agency who supplied us with the ordinary high water mark be bonded and licensed and be telling us that that's it and that they use utilize the standards that ecology has put out? I would have to check the case law on that. I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure that the county wouldn't be held responsible. Well, we are held responsible, but um, those guys, in, in, to Andy's point, that they are, uh, if they're if they're bonded to do that kind of work, then I have accepted that work before. I think the you said on uh, on um, the, the river as well with the other firm that was doing a lot of that. Um, maybe this guy's with them now. I don't know. George Wilson does a lot of bonding. Uh, no, there's another one that. Pardon? Uh, could be they're from Wenatchee and they did a lot of them yeah and so we accepted those mm -hmm. um, and you know could do our own in fact I've done our own but um, uh, it's that puts us at more risk and it's um, the biology the reason it's a biological is because you're looking at plant, plants and things yeah. that's kind of difficult actually on some of the shoreline but in Miranda Beach I think that there's enough uh, natural uh, shoreline intact that you can do that um, but so that's I, one point. I understand that. What I guess I'm trying to get to is the point that we have a small enough planting department as it is to try to be going out and double checking with ecology, a state agency. So I know that. Uh, who, who are you trying to get to come and do that work? Um, currently, it's Leonard. Okay. Leonard Jordan is the. Uh, he's the guy that's responsible for it. I, I I would think that if we have. I think that we should look into this. So we should really try to try to streamline these processes to because I've heard that, that that being a complaint from people is like why are why are you out there double verifying something that somebody who can verify it says when we're not a bio when you know we're not a biologist and DOE accepts the fact that you can a biologist can step in and do that. Well, and you know, from the director's point, I think a couple things I would like to see is number one, I'd like to be able to go on site and see their survey marks on site. Um, the other thing is too, I would like to have a stamp map with exact uh, location and not have preliminary stamped over to his stamp. Yep, I agree so I would that. like an official document and to be able to go out and verify the state mark on the ground. I don't know, Commissioner Branch is more versed in planning than I am up in that area and stuff, but I just I don't see it being a, a real good use of our time or you know, people's time to always have you being out and going out there and doing that. Now, there may be some times where that's appropriate to do, but if, if a company, a reputable company, that will supply exactly what the director said, Stamp drawing saying these are the dimensions that we've surveyed. Well, uh, can I ask you this then? Do you ever have one of that determination in the survey of the, the relationship between the two? Is the survey um, that I see here, is that the ownership? Uh, oh no, the parcel's out in the I see the parcels are going to be each out in the 25 foot setback each, right? Is that correct? Um, so the survey, so the survey verification, um, what would that be for? I'm just trying to understand the relationship. In other words, there's ordinary high water mark markings. And then the survey you're referring to is that, are you actually referring to the bar, the, uh, Thanks for the ordinary watermark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because they're not based on a survey. <clears throat> they're going to mark it, right? Mm -hmm. Stakes in the ground. Mm -hmm. um, because it's a biological. So that was a misconception for quite a few years. Is that, and it wasn't not something new, by the way. The ordinary high watermark determination has been the same for a, a long, long, long time. It's just mm -hmm. that that's the way that the telling had interpreted you. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's right. Because you couldn't you couldn't do it with a survey. What were you do it looking at is a mean high water mark um, with a survey, and that's where the confusion came in. 
Wasn't that established in the original development plan? Um, which, which part? The, the high water mark. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, you have to check the high water mark every five years. They're only good for those determinations. Oh, right? five okay. years, yes. Well, why can't you take the surveyors? Because the survey is not a survey, to, is it? No, it's not a technical survey. It's actually a, a determination made by assessing the shoreline's uh, biological, um, the plants, and the evidence that's on the shoreline that shows you it. Yeah. It would be like going around this room and putting a bunch of points on this room. When you have you have no, um, there's no benchmarks to even come up. With. Yeah, until then, until once you get to do that and you kind of visually do it, you could go off a corner or a, something, a monument or something like that, and then <clears throat> plot it on or you know, put it on the map or something, which I assume that's what they did. So it's because technically, it, so they have both both lines marked, and they have the old, um, the old and the biological line on the new side. But sort of for my own education, because I don't know, when you're determining, like, when you have to go in and determine an old or high water mark, and somebody has to be X feet off of that, map, off of that, right? There is nothing, like Commissioner Branch said, it's not a survey, right? So that, that line could do, you know, something like that on the property. So you have to actually visually go and look at the stakes on the property and then take a tape measure, I'm assuming, go off of those and go, okay, where's the corner of the house located, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. And the other thing, too, is keep in mind that those lines are even going to change a lot this year, this coming spring, with the recent fires that we've had up that way and the runoff that we're going to experience. That high water mark is probably going to be in a different location than what it was, you know, even just last year. Uh, well, how, good, how long are they good for, though? Five years. So they control the level of that lake with the dam, so I wouldn't think so I want it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's, that's not the way it works. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's, we have flooding. Yeah, well. And the water just goes right over the top of the dam. They don't control a yeah. whole lot. When so, but once you build to that ordinary water mark, it's good, right? Um, and if you can prove, I mean, if you're waiting five years for ordinary higher watermark determination to be, uh, I mean, that's a problem. And yeah, most, most of the people, they get it determined and then they're planning on building like right, next spring. Right. So a question, so I'm looking at the, the, the Miranda Beach Agreement, the vested rights um, um, statement that's provided here. Um, These are provisions of the agreement, and they're not all of them, obviously, but these are the key ones that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. so, so I've read through, I got the whole agreement here, if anybody's interested in looking through the whole agreement, but the purple tabs here throughout the agreement are what marks how many times throughout this agreement it says that the developments are still subject to permitting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, so in relationship to 14.2, I'm kind of, uh, does that negate all that stuff? I mean, it says pursuant to 3670B, the development standards and other provisions of this agreement shall apply to and govern and invest the development use and mitigation of development for the Linda Beach Reserve for a period of 30 years from the date of this agreement. This is the 2013 agreement. Uh, the county shall not modify or impose development standards beyond those set forth in this agreement, except as stated below. And each partnership shall have the vested right to develop the project pursuant to requirements set forth in the development agreement, provided, however, that the county reserves authority to impose new or different regulations on the project to the extent required by a serious threat to public health and safety. And so on and so forth. Parties agree show by VDP when the county believes any such circumstances. Which isn't the original Randy Beach agreement, is it? Is, it? is this your first agreement? This is our modified agreement, but the, the language in what you're reading was the same. Oh. Okay. 
So what about that piece? I asked. Well, I, I just read that vested rights part. And so the, the provision here says that Miranda Beach is um, vested for a period of 30 years. So, so in my mind, the, we required permits at the time that they went through this. We're still requiring the same permits. There's no, there's been no additional permitting requirements. So every time a house was built, under that agreement, they still had to go through a substantial development agreement and stuff like the that. The only reason that the, the substantial development agreement is necessary is because um, there's a provision in Title 16 that you can build a model home before the plat is finished, and they've applied for the single, they've applied for the model home before the plat is finished. You can do that if you, if you. Do oh, if you say, if that, you tell them what you're going to do, basically. Right and. In, um, in the state statute, I can't think of a number off the top of my head, model homes are not um, considered for a shoreline exemption because they're not a single family resident used for the contract of the landowner or I forget what the contract purchaser or lease agreement person. Um, so it would require a substantial development whether they did a model home in 2013 or if they did a model home Today. Good. Commissioner Branch, would this be a conversation maybe that instead of here, maybe that would be a... Actually, it's very true. It is. And um, I'm a, I wasn't aware that we were going to have this conversation. Not to me either. Way, and and like the, not my, my In fact, family. it was a surprise to me today. Me too. So um, everything, but that's okay because um, information is being part yep. here that we need to know. So it's just that we didn't have that rigorous of a schedule set. Um, because it's something that is not easily addressed in one meeting, but um, but it's a, those are points. Those are great points because there's the vested right one, but then there's the vested rights that you're talking about right now are the vested rights that were in existence at the time. And I do believe they're vested in that 25-foot setback, yeah. vested in the standards that were that applied in 2013, which is before the new showing that. So what about the CEPA provisions? Are they all still, um, uh, you know, the CEPA review that it underwent, do they um, actually apply as well um, from the original for to be project? So yes, wasn't there some stuff down in this point that Fish and Wildlife is involved in or something? I, I believe now, now you're really asking to go way back, but I'm thinking that there was a legal management plan or something like that. Yeah, do you remember what happened? Is that right now, Mr. Hammond, you doubled the setback. It was already, it was already. I, was already. I, I don't, I personally, I don't think that the setback and the high water mark are something that are of contention right now, because yeah. if we can get to the point where we say, yes, we get a, a bio or a company, that can give us a stamp. Is that, that's that's part of the whole book. Is that everything? No, so by watermark. And then if if he would just complete the long plot process, like I said, we're right at the end of that. All the conditions are met. We got to identify the high watermark, get that slope inspected, and then he needs to submit the plat and the fee. And that's going to start that you know pre final review process. If he would finish that, the whole indemnification. So the only thing is the, the indemnification part is because it's a model home not owned by anybody. Is that kind of what well, I'm saying? Well, not only that, but the lot that he's trying to build on hasn't even been created yet. Oh, oh, oh I see, I see. May I, may I make a, just a couple of comments, please? Yes. So we had a piece of property without any buildings on it around the beach. So we had a plot process for a plot application process for part of that land. Uh, it was dragging on, and we wanted to build a model home that we would be able to have the use of this summer. So we made, a, an, app, we made an application for a building permit. Well, the planning department determined that because the plot was in process, all of these other things came into play. 
that we would need to provide a substantial development permit to make that application. This would be the 30 day, I'm sorry, I have to help here, 30 day period. Permit process, yeah. Permit period. Uh, and then there's an indemnification agreement. It went on and on and on. It just made, it just didn't make any sense. But they didn't make this stuff up, right? To all of that. We might as well just complete the flat because we won't have to do those things once the flat's in place. Perfect. So uh, I wrote the director last week and said, we're not going to be submitting this substantial development permit application. We won't need an, an indemnification agreement. Because you're so, going to finish the plot? Pardon? Because you're going to finish the plot. Well, we hope so. Good. Okay. <laughs> so, so just to go back to the old the uh, high watermark issue. Mm -hmm. So we understand that uh, there were some issues in, in the past uh, that, re that resulted in DOE instituting this biological determination. No, 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 no. No, it's that, that, that has been, in fact, um, a... a it, the way it's, it's been. been it's always been that way it was a whoever did it they didn't they didn't set it up correctly i mean right yeah it's That's, been in the shoreline mass, uh, um, yep. the shoreline management act for ever. i can show you places that uh, twist the shoreline and twist where in fact the first time i ever heard of it was in 1990 mm -hmm. and they showed us i guess what i'm saying though is that company if they're following protocol I mean, and your point's well taken in that regard as well. Um, it's it's uh, maybe it's not a it's not a policy that's been established in the um, in the uh, planning department because I think that there's a t period of time where there were uh, quite a few violations on Lake Osuyus that um, showed that there wasn't even a high watermark determined. Let's see, we had one over at the Thorndike property that I'm just not done yet. And I'll let I'll, I get, you, I'll, I just, I'll get you in a minute. Raise my hand. Um, Got a question. But, um, but it was, uh, that was, I don't know who made that determination, nobody at that point. But, and so ecology has been, um, and the Corps of Engineers and Fish and Wildlife have been on Lake Osoyoos looking at these violation issues. And so they're watching for compliance. And so here these guys are trying to maintain compliance. Although that policy, that part where you can have a, um, uh, a firm do it, I think that we should make sure we have that. So and I simple as that. You, Go ahead. you took the words right out I of my I knew I was going to beat you to it. But, yep. You know, all I, was gonna I had to interrupt was, you to do it. All I was going to say was the exact same thing. Yep. Why don't we have a policy that says that... Mr. Ham. So, we haven't had... We weren't part of the problem at Grand Beach. We built 28, I think it's 28 homes in the waterfront. And we complied with uh, the requirements in terms of the distance from the water and so forth. The height of the main floor, so on and so forth. So we, we haven't had any issues. Uh, we haven't had to provide this biological determination before, but we went along and mm -hmm. retained the services of these biologists okay. and, and did that. But, you know, frankly, we, we invited, we have invited the planning department and we've invited ecology to come to the site, to visit the site. Sometimes, well, last summer, and not, they elected not to come, whatever they didn't imagine other reasons. But uh, here we are. We, we submitted this uh, biological identification of the high water mark last July, seven months ago, and it hasn't been dealt with. Would you be able to and, proceed with it? Excuse me. But would you be able to proceed with it? Um, with that biological determination had been, well, if the ordinary high water mark is acceptable. Are you, or what's the hold up here? Yeah, no. well, okay. So, they're of the mantra, trust but verify, right? Like, we trust that they're doing mm -hmm. their job, they're going to flag it out. We mm -hmm. verify, we verify that they're set back the appropriate amount of whatever that is, 25, mm -hmm. 50 feet. I mean, there's no, there's no issue regarding the ordinary water mark. It's just, we have to check that box to say that we looked at. Okay, but I mean, if after you check that box, what's going to happen next? So we need that preliminary, the final plat and the fee, so that we can start the final review on that large or long plat if that's what you can go forward with. So that's not the only thing holding that up. You can go forward without the determination with the uh, rest of the and project? During that two-week process, so 
what I would feel very comfortable going up there and verifying the high water mark if he could get his surveyor to go or his biologist to go up there and put, put this place plagues in the ground. I don't know about which so you're not you, that could be done. So the question I have is so that you, you can't walk up there and see the ordinary high water mark today to tell where the foundation of the house is being built. Why? It's not vegetation. Marked. It's not marked. No vegetation. It's around. So the 27 page turf and environmental report has plans, maps, a number of photographs in it of all of the states you're talking about. They're all there. I looked there yesterday. They're all in place. Nothing's been moved. There's no reason why someone can't go out and inspect that. Anybody associated with Veranda Beach, but somebody that would like to do things to Veranda Beach. So, 
verify. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Well, that's the that's the tough one because um, we don't want to have to do that stuff twice. We should have to do it twice. When they did that map thing, though, didn't they have some corners in there? And basically, they would have. Did they have measurements on there from some some points for the corners? Well, it maps to scale. Scale drawing. Right. Yeah. So I mean, I don't see how anybody could, uh, you know, basically, if, you, if I take a ruler and I go on that line anywhere and I measure over to where the they say the house is going to be at a certain distance, and if I walk out there and all of a sudden that distance is shorter, I know something happened. But that's being on top of things, you know. I mean, that's been difficult. Yeah. That's why we wanted to have a planner up there, by the way. Um. So um, I do agree with Commissioner Ranch, by the way. So on uh, that part of it. Now the rest of it is like you got to make the other requirements. There's vested rights. You got that figured out. You got to make sure we know what's vested and what isn't. And I think and it's quite a broad statement. I'm vesting, <laughs> but it's there, right? So the rest of this, though, I think that we should work out because. Um, we're not going to do that here. And yeah. Commissioner Hover brought that up. It was a surprise to me. And um, I would have said, if we're going to do this kind of thing, we were going to go a lot longer than what uh, we have allocated time for, because this was the planning update, which we might miss today. This is the planning update. Is that going to take the whole staff tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> we could do that. If that's if that's needed, you absolutely can do those type of things. We just right. tell Laney to send an email out to staff to say, look, we have some updates from. We... Okay, yeah, I I'm sorry, I didn't expect this. Uh, okay. What I have tomorrow is uh, I want to bring up what we received about the file requests from the video oh, yeah. we got back, and then the two interim ordinances for the and the district use chart that we need to figure out. Okay, so we know that she needs some time, so we might, you might have to cut some people short and just let them know that we'll make sure we've got time to do the work we need to do. Sure, we don't. And I, I just want to say, you know, like we're trying our hardest to work with Mr. Hammond. We've met with him. We've met with Harry Houston. We've gone over this stuff a hundred times. We've reread the code. We reread the whole Veranda Beach agreement. And, you know, right now, I feel the walls in his court. You know, once that final plat filed and the fees paid, we could have been through all of this already. What do you got to do, Jim? I have no idea what I have to do. So <laughs> earlier, like I said, we need to get the final plat um, submitted and the $330 fee so the, the final fee. review can start. So I have delivered hard copy of the plat. The final one? Yes, to uh, the health department, to the engineer, who by the way has told me everything's fine. You, you, you suggest he has to inspect the slope book. Uh, I spoke to him personally and he told me he was fine and I said, well, have you advised the planning department? He said, yes, he had. So I, I don't understand what's going on. He's advised you that you, he didn't yeah, have to look at the... That he went up and looked at the road and he asked 30 feet. He oh. did not say anything Didn't about slope, inspecting right? the rock slope. And our department, from my knowledge, this morning when I asked her about the update that she needed to finish this long plat was, number one, the final plat map. Okay. So here's what I suggest to the, uh, my fellow commissioners. And if you guys want to do it, you can. But I would just like to go over what needs to be done, make sure that there's these boxes there. You, you all you got to do is check the boxes and make sure that's what you're intending to do or want to do. And that's you want to do it, right? With them? Yeah, I do. Go ahead. Okay. Um, what I was suggesting earlier when I said, hey, this is probably something where you should uh, take a look at those things since you're, you know, we're on the same page, I believe. Okay. With the. So, yeah, we want to make sure we. Yeah, do okay, everything well, legally, I, but yeah. the fact is, is that that w I don't want to see our planning department having to do having double double up on things. I think that's a, no. a waste. No, this is because of some past practices that occurred, right. and I know where what got you there. And in fact, let me ask you this: Did um, former planning director um, 
seek for clarification as well on these uh, shoreline determinations? No, did he used to do that or was he doing that? Okay. Yes. Well, yeah, even when a, bio a biologist was involved, because for me, I, you know, when they show my their credentials and if they, they should not follow through and actually not follow the law, they probably won't do business in Oakland County ever again and probably nowhere else. So, I mean, that's, uh, I think some of the codes that we have talk about the validity of the firm that does it. Yeah, so there's some and criteria. And in this one as well. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if it is a qualified professional, we determine that's what it is and we're satisfied with that definition. Well, let's let it go to that. And because who are we to question except if college wants to do that and it doesn't sound like they want to. They want to put it on us, obviously. Right. But yeah, they've been putting everything out. Yeah. They are the correct distance. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. Like yes. Them. Yeah. And so, if you don't, if that's, I think what I'm hearing here is, is that since the determination was made, you haven't got, um, you haven't uh, felt comfortable with the fact that stakes are in place. You, I mean, yeah. you're trying to verify because of time. That's what I'm getting at. It's like, yeah. Well, and we haven't. Um... There was so much back and forth before on the lake yep. that it was almost, I don't know what's the right word I'm looking for, but um, we just didn't want to put people at that risk of ecology coming back on us and saying that their stuff was in the wrong spot. Right. And then them having to move it. Right. Well, and a lot of that, tell me if I'm wrong, was based on that survey thing that was going on okay that's correct and that's that's over okay that's over well anyway i will come and visit a little more um is there so is the rest of the development you've yeah, there are problems in the development that you you know that that you didn't permit on or anything like that is there some complications here because I received a call from somebody that said there were, so it's somebody that was in the, in the development, and it has to do with some um, uh, land slope failure. That, uh, yeah, we, uh, we, so there's a lot of homeowners at Brandon Beach. You know, they're all married. They all got friends and brothers and sisters, and everybody thinks they're, they own the place. And, and it's impossible, I'm sure you can appreciate, to keep everybody happy all of the time. So we did have uh, an issue with an underground spring, and uh, that whole thing, uh, there, were, uh, there was a letter writing campaign to planning and so forth about that, although it's a half a mile away from the flat. Right, right. Uh, and so uh, the planning department decided that they would ask us to do this work that was recommended to alleviate that problem. And we've gone ahead and done that. So is the, I mean, uh, I'm sorry. That's, I just want to make sure that's what Josh was that's, looking at. That's the, and, okay. and that's the enforcement action that was brought forth to us from the Department of Ecology to address. Okay, so. Um, and it is a ways away, but it was tied together with this article. Right, okay, okay. Well, you know, all together, the development's tied together. So, I mean, it's important if there's something that goes undone that is addressed. So, if I may, may just make a comment, Mr. Chairman. So, you know, I'm here for two reasons. One is uh, our immediate needs. Uh, you know, they're, they're, I, I can't begin to tell you the, the, the problem that this has created, the length of time it's taken to get this spot approved. We have contractors ready to start homes. We've got suppliers uh, with materials and so forth on hand. We've got bills to pay. Uh, there's three lots sold. Those people want to get busy building their cottages. There's a clubhouse to be built. So these things are all stacking up behind, and it's become a real uh, serious uh, issue. Uh, so that's our immediate problem. We want to get this finalized and do whatever we have to do to do that. Uh, the second 
thing I wanted to mention to you was, uh, you know, you're quite aware of the market conditions out there. Uh, the real estate market is booming, not only here, but all over the place, it seems. And so the opportunity is there for us to sell some new development at Grand Beach that hasn't been there for a number of years. So we've sold over 45 cottages, resales at Grand Beach in the last year. Wow. So there was this, this, this tremendous supply and not very much demand and it was holding prices down. But now prices are at the point where we can compete with new cottages and products. So uh, we want to take advantage of that. And of course, it's in the county's best interest to do that. We've got this, you know, the permits for these houses are in excess of $10,000. And then there's the tax revenue. I don't need to go into that. I'm sure you get that beaten with that stick all the time. <laughs> but uh, the point is, uh, uh, there's really an opportunity for for us to uh, make some headway here and drive some economic benefit for our community, uh, our builders, our suppliers, and, and all of these new homeowners coming from the west side are uh, got their pockets full and they're doing renovations and they're buying new furniture and they're doing all kinds of things. So it's it's very positive for the community, and I know you I know you know that generally, but I just wanted to. You know, let you know what's happening at Grand Beach specifically. It's really impacting things, and we're really, really optimistic about having a great, a great view there. So, but if I may, uh, one minute. We, if I had known that it was going to take us 18 months to process a plan application, we wouldn't have bothered. Uh, with the development agreement, what's the point? So I guess my question, though, is is that if uh, if if it's because there's things that you have to provide to them to get it done, you're a player in it too, right? Sure. So if you want to get that mark, access that market, um, I mean, are you feeding them the information a little bit at a time, or is this something you, you're just learning? Do you see what I mean? Because I, I, I go through the same frustration. I understand what you're talking about when – if if I learn something new every day about what I'm doing, that makes it difficult. But I mean, there's a whole process here. Uh, we, we realize it's a two-way street. And okay. We have our obligations and responsibilities, of course. Okay. But you know, the development agreement was set up so that uh, a lot of these issues were out of the way. And so when when you made a uh, submitted a plot application, as long as to the requirements of the development agreement. Uh, the planning director had administrative authority to administratively approve that. And, uh, you know, that should be... Do you have an administrative authority to approve a long plat? No, I do not. But that is how it's written in the development agreement. And that has not changed. She's going to end up signing the final plat on this. So the board must sign it as well, of course. But it, 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 the, the point is this. It's not necessary to go through public hearings and uh, elongated process. Okay, we'll talk about that. <laughs> because you just entered the legal world that, um, that I don't usually talk about in a public meeting if we get into that. But I just wanted to point out that the preliminary approval was issued on March 23rd of last year, at which time the brand of each partnership was given four years to meet the conditions of the approval. Right. And I want to point out one other thing that's going to come up on here is number 15 of the preliminary approval, which is requiring, it says the proposed development appears to infringe on lands owned by the brand of each homeowners association, particularly lots. 233, 234, 235, and 236. A boundary line adjustment will be needed, will need to be recorded so that all lands proposed for development will be under brand of each partnership ownership. So with that said, the boundary line adjustment application that we had in our department, um, Mr. Hammond took back and would reimburse the fees for that. So that also needs to be completed as part of the uh, preliminary approval. So, uh, the director wasn't here through this period, but that original site plan 
did encroach on some of the homeowners association land, but that site plan has been adjusted. And the site plan that you have before you does not encroach on the homeowners association land. The flat, the boundary line adjustment you're talking about is a totally different boundary line adjustment for a different piece of property. So we won't require a boundary line adjustment. Can I verify that? Okay. <coughs> What's your next move? Uh, uh, I'm at your service. Or you said you submitted a final plat to someone? We have a hard copy of the final plat uh, that I distributed just to try and move things along. To planning, though, also? Planning, uh, health. Uh, Do you have that here. final plat? Okay. Can you could you go over to the office? And... I met with the surveyor and Mr. Hammond, and he had them in his hand. And when we parted ways, he said, "I'm going to go deliver these by hand." Well, we've Correct. been told that several times things were supposed to have been delivered to the building department that weren't there. Things were supposed to come back to our department. Harry come in and you know accused us of having documents that were never he was told that were delivered down here to the county that we never received so I don't we, know what's happening but I think them. there's a lot of um maybe players that are understanding what the process is and so that's why we tried to put everything in writing for Mr. Hammond and sent him the letter I believe it was like last week or the week <clears> before that that lined out everything that needed to happen in order for the long home and for the long flat. No. But what, just, no. what I'm not what I'm not understanding no. is I saw those documents in his hand and when we parted ways he said I'm going to deliver him by hand and about forty five minutes later I saw him walk right up the sidewalk here. He was in this building somewhere with the document. All those three shards filed, but is that, I am I correct? Yes, this you morning are. Morning when I was going through all of this stuff to have a list. So you physically, you physically, do, just a second here. You physically, you're just asking. You physically delivered that final plat here. Personally. Okay. Yes, so what Mr. we, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I will get copies made of this final plat and re-deliver them to the planning department. Okay. Can you uh, deliver? Okay. So, did you have something else to add? If it's something that we could we could get squared away here uh, a little later, we'll go ahead and go and do business. I hate to do this kind of business in a public meeting. Not that we have anything to hide, but it makes it more difficult to to deal with it. And well, you guys will check. Straight. Oh, oh, oh. I'll just get another copy. Okay. Well, if they've got it, they'll tell you, right? Okay. Okay. Let's uh, a debrief on it uh, a little later in the morning or something. See what we got. And we'll do what we can to make sure that all the boxes get checked. But they got to be checked. I mean, you know. You know. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank Richard. you. Thanks. Makes my glasses fall. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we did get that letter. Did you, did you wash your pickup? I did. I did. I love the fact that we got a nice uh, um, car wash over it. It's black. You got, I mean, yeah. It's like it doesn't matter. Once every like week, two weeks is probably about it because ten bucks. So I'm just wondering, and, you know, seeing how it's afforded. Yeah. Did, you, did you get the heated tailgate uh, or uh, button model? I did. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so it warms your hands when you're pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Oh, God. Yep, I didn't do that. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's funny. Um, Couldn't resist. Oh, I know. No, believe me. I've been, we, I've been taking that a long time. Uh, well. Well, that was fun. 
Yeah, I would prefer a little bit more advanced notice than we have to do that. So, Mike, that was a surprise for me. Yeah, I, I apologize that I was late, but I had a, some parts coming, and the guy I was supposed to meet him, and he was late. So, so in that same vein, let's let's talk about things like that. Okay, because those th there's some things like that that are going on over there too. Not as drastic, but just you know a few like that where I've gotten you know hey they lost something, hey it's taken too long, da da da. Um, how do we how do we proceed with trying to fix that? Because normally what I'll end up doing is I talk to whoever it is on the phone. I try to get some information. Like I'm, I'm doing that right now with a person. I, ask, I said, I need the, your parcel number. I need to know what's going on. And then I can go to the planning department and I can ask them, okay, why, you know, what's going on here? And that's usually how I kind of, um, you know, deal with that. Is that what you want to do? Do we want to have those people come in here? Oh, well, that is <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't need the reason I brought that up about Mr. Hampton is think about it. It's not to his advantage to come down here and wander around with a document and then not deliver it. No, I know. I, I know that. No, there's, and, something, there's something wrong there, and I don't know what the answer to it is, and I agree with you. I mean, it, uh, it wouldn't make any sense. No. Um, so just as long as... But it does happen. Yeah, you know, it does. I mean, I had, I had it happen one time on a county deal, Lincoln County, and I won the bid on a... Yes. On a deal, and they never, they never submitted my bid. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we want a more efficient organization than that, and I, I see some, you know, it's a matter of time, and they only got so much time to get transitioned into all this stuff. But the planning department had a whole different way of doing business yeah. in the past, and it didn't involve everybody. Right. It only involved one person. And so, yeah. and some of those things got a little skewed in the process. Yeah. But, uh, but I don't know. Here's an important thing that I read today. Did you read in one actual paper that the community development department in Killian County is being sued, right? Oh, why? By a group of people because of this very kind of thing. And so, and they outlined six. Because, of, wait, because the uh, planning department or the commissioners are holding back on or making it hard for them to do stuff that they we're going to do exactly. Gotcha. So and so they, the the um, integrity of the department planning department is being questioned, and um, you know that's a matter of I've I've gone to their planning department and been a part of the conditional use process well, there. Yeah, and, and um, you know it'll happen once it gets a paper, you know. Oh, it's dominoes. It, it's in the paper, and it's got. But there is six points that they had in there to make it better, and uh, and one of them, you know, some of those points are right here in our lap, and one of those is. Uh, is a matter of providing enough vision and leadership to actually get what we want there in front of them and, and know what they can and can't do. And this whole thing in the past with verification, for instance, on the Oregon Air Watermark, it, it's the result of bad practices of the past. And so they're stuck on that. Yeah. And so you find yourself, and you know, in the accusation down there was there was no more obstruction than there was assistance. And, 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 um, Pete is talking to me about the fact that she is there to assist development to move forward within the parameters, you know, but be there. In other words, it's not my job to say no to you. My job is to help you get through that process. And so, um, and I, I have had some conversations about policies in the past in this planning department that I went, well, wait a minute, how come that transpired like that? Well, it was because we didn't want, um, say, for instance, the surveyors to submit flat applications with the uh, deviation. Yeah. And I went, well, wait a minute. If it's there, then we will honor what's there. Right. So, but that's just a matter of practice, investing, and all those things. And I think we can make it better here. Uh, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot going on right now, and it's challenging during that time. And uh, I mean, your person right up front is as valuable as anybody yeah. throughout that department. The thing that I run in that I, that I know is that between what gets said to planning director or and planners and what gets said to me can be totally different. Mm -hmm. And so I am one where I'm like, okay, I need to know what exactly you said. And then I go and say, okay, what exactly did they say? And then try to go, okay, how do we get this thing to work, to move forward, you know, or does it? And if it doesn't, if it's not moving forward, and this is one thing like I got, 
I got one over here that they need to just send a letter. It says, this is the decision. You need to go either do this or or not, right? I mean, there's, there's a checklist in the trial. I will piece the building like that. But there's a checklist in the file, and it's like, this is what you got done. This is what you don't have done. Yeah. And I don't want any surprises to develop here. I don't right. want, you know, it's like, I don't want you to go, oh, by the way, I didn't tell you yeah. about this. Yeah, in the 11th hour. And and so, um, but once you streamline that process, there's some things that have gotten in the way. And Vegasus is a really good example of that, because I'm surprised it's gotten in the way in the past. Some of those issues that there was lack of enforcement. So people were just building. You know, they were doing stuff, and it was like, uh, and I went around on two different tours up there, and I went, well, where did that come from? You know, and it was because the county didn't have the resources to actually keep track of the shoreline. And here's the core, and they, you know, everybody doing the shoreline inventory. And it's like, and the big mistake I found at that point was that um, these guys were asked to go on those, and they weren't putting that boat. And they need to be. Can I ask you a question? His point. Uh, why would anybody do a plan development from now on? No, I know. I, I agree with that. Totally. Well, well, they're utterly really useless if you don't follow them. But I got I got a question yeah. for you, Commissioner Branch. Okay, so because I'm thinking about this just in my brain, how I think about things. Okay, so the high water mark is the stakes, right? Now they have a they have a line drawn on there that you could take a measure you could take a scale ruler mm -hmm. and go from a pin find a corner and measure over to it but there's no points located on that and that would be one thing that i think should be if, if we're going to move forward with hey yeah we you know we'll accept that yeah however we need a point of reference on each um part plat or on each parcel that's along the water so that we can basically back reference you know use that survey survey for um some for a reference point, because I, I, I was thinking about it, I'm like, well, they couldn't move the line when I was thinking about, well, well, yeah, they actually could, because if you have no, if you have no actual point of reference, right, but it's labeled on the map, and it's just a line, you could go, oh, well, the, you know. The measure from that line, I'm, if I'm using that as a site line. Right. Now, you got it, again, they're good for five years, right? Uh, I, if I'm going to do a development... But the other thing I would do, actually, if I was developing a property, and I, it's just only because I have the experience of seeing this happen, and that is, if I was um, making the candy vote coming out there, and I had lines that showed where these lots were going to go somewhere out there, I would be putting a permanent line in there. Well, me too. Because the, that's the big deal, is when you put stakes out there all day, and like if you want to, you know, the old joke. You, you need like, a brass monument yeah. on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah you need yeah, something exactly. to go off of. You know, yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah. You need a brass monument to be able to affect your investment. Is basically mm -hmm. what I'm talking yeah. about. And they'll use it over and over again. Oh, absolutely. Uh, right. So yeah. that's that's something that, that you know. Especially with the growth that he's having and stuff. You know, yeah. I mean, if and that's a solid point of reference. Every time, that's a go-to point. Right. right. So. This, this thing's been out there a long time, though, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and there's been some things that happened there and some changes, and I'm going to learn. One thing could you ask how it, how it, because in that discussion, I, I understand that things probably get a little convoluted because he wanted to do the model home. I agree with them that the model home requires something different, mm -hmm. right? It's not on a parcel, right? right? So you got to do a development agreement saying, okay, where this house goes, this parcel. There's going to be a lot around it. Exactly. Fits the standards, right? Exactly. Right. Okay, so I understand that. So, however, if and, and so he he did say though that he just he just stopped doing that here not terribly long ago. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, then that means that he was trying to proceed forward with the model home mm -hmm. up until just here not too terribly long ago. So up until that point, he still needed the substantial development agreement. Okay, then he changes over and he goes, no, I don't. Okay, so now all you need is the long plat application, just give it to us and get it done. So I don't think the whole 18 month thing is necessarily all planning's fault, but I would like to understand a little bit more about, remember that, you know, when, when you're saying, hey, here's a checklist, Here's here's follow the path. Either go this way and you give me this, or go this it's way and give me this. Here. Right, yeah. and that's that's what everybody needs because yeah, yeah, because there's a lot of players. 
even when there's one or two players, somebody, and I've been seeing this happen, surveyor comes in, they're doing the work. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, I'm doing the work. Right. It's like, do you know what box you're on? Right. <laughs> exactly. Well, and that's where, so I had a meeting on Thursday with um, uh, the assessor and Pete and Dan and um, uh, Mike Hilton. Because of some, we're getting that water, um, water banking deal, and I want to know. Okay, what? I need some assumptions on what we have to put into that program to actually calculate the the reserve amounts. But then we started talking about. It. I said, look, I said everybody needs a checklist, like what to do, right? Because some people go down to health and they'll say, oh, well, I need, I want to dig a, or I need to get a septic system in, and he goes, oh, well, there, you know, you probably have to dig a test pit, mm-hmm. without even knowing that planning would say, we're sorry, you can't build a house on that. Mm-hmm. So why would you dig a test pit? And so I said, <laughs> you guys need to make up a checklist. Yeah. And it has to be in every single department. It's identical. So that anybody that walks in and says, I want to do something, you say, all right, there's your roadmap. Okay. Um, I want to do a septic system. Do you have your checklist with you? Where are you? Oh, I'm right here. Oh. Yeah, you're right, but yeah. Okay. Or no, you need to start up here. Go get a site analysis done. Make sure you can build a house there. You know, all that stuff. So it's just it's trying to. That's a little short flap that this uh, friend that's <coughs> doing over there. I, he showed me these things, and I was going, "Where are you at? Where are you at?" Right. And it's the same thing. It was like, "Well, I know the surveyor said he's taking care of that," and I'm going, "Dude, you have got to quit doing that kind of thing because." If you're going to bring shelling the money out, you got to know what's going on. Yeah. And when to stop, actually, when to stop. When yeah. To, when to do anything. Um, I agree with you. There's three things. Um, Josh made a recommendation as far as an architect goes. Mm-hmm. So we should think about having that discussion tomorrow. Okay. You made a recommendation on what? On an architect. Based architect uh, based on the uh, uh, architect for the uh, for oh, home, oh, home oh, call okay. services. Okay, I didn't yeah, understand. Yeah, well, that's good. I think that's a good thing, but anyway. Okay, and then uh, I'll work on that on the letter to and I basically count as a kind of a countywide deal. And then we did get a letter from DOE, so we need to work on a response for. That. Uh, the letter from DOE is the one about uh, what are the road? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm writing things down so I don't forget. Them. You're gonna get that done by tomorrow, right? Are you gonna get back to me on the um, the uh, capital facilities plan on any changes that you would like? God, to I was like, woke up in the middle of the I night. bet you were thinking about that. Yeah. If you can get that. Actually, I thought about where I was ice fishing. Oh, <laughs> oh I see how I, I was ran. thinking that I wasn't going to be able to ski all the way back. I was going to die, and I wouldn't have to worry about it. So if – I know that you're busy. Um, oh, yeah, so if you can get that to me because I got the other two, yeah. I'll put it together and get it done. Okay. You're just waiting for me. Uh, no, but I don't want to – I'm not going to – Okay. I'm not going to edit everything together until. Yeah, I can see her in his eyes. Right there. <laughs> oh. <Yeah>. Anyway. <laughs> I just wanted, before you leave, uh, to go over what the treasurer gave me okay. for you. <laughs> do you. Did you want to uh, deal with the uh, minutes? Do that? We don't do, need to deal with the minutes today. Okay. Okay. Tomorrow. okay. So tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were really anxious. Okay. Uh-huh. okay. Okay, so the first item is the acknowledgement of receipt. This is for, uh, this is a report uh, from the treasurer's office, uh, uh, which re- which is attached to a list of refunds made to taxpayers during the year of 2020. It requires the commissioner's signature to acknowledge receipt of those um, things listed. Um, also, uh, oh, the list. Also, I have the Exhibit A, which uh, will be attached to a resolution that you direct me to draft um, to uh, provide for the surplus auction of the uh, 2021 tax title properties. Um, there, the list, the exhibit rather, was um, was emailed to the board and to me by the treasurer, and it includes um, the three items 
um, could be sold at its uh, treasurer sale. And the amounts of the minimum bid and the assessed values, the, uh, how the parcel size and the parcel tax numbers. And so um, if the board directs me to do so, then I will create the resolution to, uh, to put or sell those at an auction March 19th. Can I ask a question about that, Wayne? Just the one that I was thinking about the other day, and this is a perfect example of it. Okay. Uh, why does, and this may be just practice, I don't know what, but why does the board make a motion to direct you to create a resolution, but then we make a motion to vote on? Isn't it just, shouldn't it just be that There's we. Two actions, because I work for the board. Mm -hmm. It is um, showing in the minutes that I'm directed to do something by the board that I work for. I don't. You don't just go out and it's, do it. It's a it's kind of an official way of of you telling me what to do, um, and then and then the action is totally a separate action for okay. the the resolution or the whatever I was directed to do. It's okay. kind of a separate action that the board can then discuss separately. Okay. Um, so and it, it's gonna... not just me doing, Something. you know, whatever I want to do. It's it's the more structured yeah. way of. And I didn't mean that. I meant if we were to say, hey, Lane, can you please, could you please uh, make up a resolution for our consideration on that matter? Um, but I understand the formality of it. So move to direct the clerk of the board to uh, create a resolution uh, for tax title property for the board's consideration. Okay. Uh, motion and second and discussion. Uh, I just to add what item that the discussion you just had with her and it's probably not as relevant to this. So I'll just go ahead and ask for the vote because it's outside. Okay. Any other discussion? All three percent. All right. Okay. Um, I guess the one thing I thought about that a few times myself and, I, and I, I thought about a few times where we actually had something come up and we decided not to take that course of action to have them do the resolution. We wanted to have some other information before the resolution came. And then that was pertinent to how she prepared the resolution. Some of this, I agree, is routine. Like, um, but I, I, I think it, it forces us to give it a little more of a consideration. But what happens if I were to be in on like a Friday or something like that? Mm -hmm. And I would say, Laney, we, we have to resolve we have to resolve to do something. Can you put, can you create a resolution to um, do whatever so that the board can consider it, please? Mm -hmm. I would or, do it too. I mean, you know, so, so it's, therein lies the redundancy for me because if we're sitting here, we direct her to do it. But if I didn't vote, like what you did, man. Then right. you would vote no. But then she'd have to put the time in the resolution. Right, exactly. It's an Yeah. So, all of her actions that okay no i mean no i agree no i i see what you're saying i just that, that clicked and i'm like but oh, wait a minute that would mean that all of the things that she does should has to go through uh, you don't have to but it, it creates an efficiency as well um and there are certain things that you're you're right and i guess in that situation me to do. in that situation then I would write my own resolution and I would say, I mean, I want to, I need the board to consider this. And then I would present it to the board right. and you would consider it. Yep. Right. yep. Okay. So but I would make darn sure that uh, you agreed with me before I would. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. <laughs> That's all about it. Uh, that would go against everything. Uh, why? Okay, so wait, this exhibit A. That we don't know. Oh, so that's just, I just want you I, I just thought you might want to look at it. Oh. Yeah. I actually looked at one of the parcels to see what the heck is NOMAC that was actually gonna go away. Or that become our property. Oh. oh that's one other yeah. that is one other thing. Okay, so there is a there's a piece of property uh up on the north side of the Weeman or not Weeman Bridge, sorry, the Mazama Bridge there. Okay. The DOT owns. Oh yeah, I remember. Right. So, uh, 
Jason from the Conservancy wants me to go down and start looking at uh, the funding mechanism, basically through. Oh, it would be sir, uh, uh, RCO or, or surf board okay. um, to, to purchase this piece of property. Yep. Okay, so now are we, We're, do we want to try to move forward with that and Okanagan County buy a piece of property? I think, I'm pretty sure we can get funding for it, okay. but I'm not positive. Okay. But I'm willing to go through the motion. Uh, as I recall, it was, a, is, it was, it even, was it connected to the bridge right away? Uh, what it is, it's it's just this little sliver of land. I remember it, but I was wondering if it was connected to that right away, just out of curiosity. Mm -mm. I think that the well, the big well that we have, I want to say is right there, close. Uh -huh. So it kind of is. It is more of uh, the fact that it's it would be, um, and this is this is something that that we should also discuss is that okay so Okanagan County is what you know we said yeah we're we'll, we'll consider buying this piece of property so that nobody buys it develops on it because it's a uh, habitat spot right. but yet we're not getting credit for anything like that through you know through any sort of development uh, you know it's not a it's not a net ecological benefit I guess right, right? even though we are doing it same with the um, you know buying that pit and then saying, "Hey, we'll sell 400 acres to the Department of Fish and Wildlife," and I think that I think that those things should be looked at as they are looked at, but um, not in terms of uh, giving credit. But there's actually credit being given in a different way. Just adding that to it. But um, I think what credit it gives us is that people are seeing that we're acting responsibly. And so here's another here's another one that happened a few, several years back, and it's the same kind of thing in a way. I used to have a surplus property thing that came through on this quite a few years back, right? And there were all these properties built in Mountain County with surplus. Well, they were Mountain County. Yeah, they had properties. And they were all, almost all of them were right in the shoreline, in the water almost. And so we were, the county was putting them up for a bit. And I'm going, wow, you can't develop them. What good, we, we were creating ourselves with even a problem because people go, I got this big property, I want to develop it. And you're going, we can. <laughs> right. And they brought it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why we sold it to you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we well, anyway, just, divest ourselves. Just though. a thought, but that piece, if we can get other people's money, which is, you know, the state's money, and there's a lot of people in the state that. Well, I think we could even get the tribes, some of the tribes' money. Yeah. And so what, what are we doing? Well, we're just taking another piece. It's like we're putting a conference conservation easement on our own. Yeah. Um, properties. And I see people actually looking at that, and we want to make sure that we. Mm -hmm. Hey, we don't want that to be um, a development block because we know we're going to have to say no. So why not? No. But we want to make sure that people know that because there's a certain amount of credibility we get out of it too. The Yakimas, you know, I mean, if we had a policy that said anything that isn't developable within the shoreline, we'll try to gain access to so that nobody ends up with it that, that uh, doesn't try to. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, what good is it to them? And so, I yeah. So just something to think about. Sure. Yes. All right. So uh, I move to acknowledge the receipt uh, of refunds that the county treasurer has um, dispersed. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Okay. Say aye. 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 I just noticed a lot of that was uh, fire damage property. Huh? Yeah. Is that Okay. Uh, before the board leaves, I have one more thing. I mentioned earlier today that the Nuke meeting was uh, rescheduled from this Friday to March 31st, which is a Wednesday. Is that okay with you guys? Are, and do you plan on attending it? It's probably through a WebEx uh, invitation. It is good. <laughs> it is good for me, and I, I am going to go. Yeah. You're, you're, you are. 
I am going to go. Okay. Is this, is this scheduled so he's going to go? Yeah. And what about Commissioner Branch? I'm not going to go. I, no. Okay. I have uh, these other cross conflict conflicts that keep coming up, and I figure if he's going to go, we're good. So I don't need to do a special notice for this. Unless Commissioner Dietro is going to go. In. He's only going if he can go in person. Oh. So yeah. I. That's why I said, well, you better. I, I don't know that. Um, don't know that he'll be gone. <laughs> well, we can meet it. I don't know. What's the deal? Oh, we're in phase. Oh, I don't know what phase they're in, actually. Ferry County. Oh, Stevens County. Because yeah, we should be able to meet in a group of. What does it know? It depends on what policies they've, they've yeah. adopted for their their, their stuff. Okay. Um, the size of this meeting room. Is and the size of their meeting room. Are we ready to go? Oh, yep. Uh, we see you in the morning. All right. Did you make sure I get this for you? Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Follow up on Jim. Which one should we put? Well, I need my other mask. These aren't that comfortable. Yeah. But they help me hear better. Oh, good. <laughs> they hold your ears forward. <laughs> yeah.